Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. I guess the essence of what I'm saying today is I think it's time for us as a church body to get the message that the time has come for us to stop living to please ourselves and to please other people and let's make a clean break and say I choose to live to please God but I am going to need a lot of help. Now, we know that we live under a covenant of mercy, and we know that we live in the dispensation of grace. Uh, but you know, grace, and I, and I know you know this, but grace is not an excuse to do what's wrong and think you can get by with it. The grace of God is the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives enabling us to do what is right. But you have not because you ask not. If we seek God with our whole hearts, we will find him. And I really want to encourage you to make this prayer part of your everyday life and possibly pray it on and off throughout the day, maybe 10 times. Lord, help me do what is right. Amen. Can we add that to our prayers? Lord, help me do what is right. Come on, let's all practice. Help me do what is right. Mm. 1 Peter 2.15. And you know what? You are probably, every one of you are probably smarter than you might think you are. Because you know what? You probably know when you're not doing something right. There's probably a little conviction there. Hmm. That's another benefit of being filled with the Spirit. Is he's our convictor and convincer. You see, I hope that I'm making myself plain. In having this relationship that I'm talking about, it's like there has to be a, an exchange between you. And so, you talk to the Holy Spirit. He shows you things that God wants you to do. You don't just make an excuse and say, well, that's hard. It's just, it's just too hard. You say, I, I want to do everything you want me to do. I want to have this closeness with you. Help me. I cannot do it without you. Help me do what's right. Help me forgive. Help me be kind to people. Help me not to shut people out of my life because they have done things that have hurt me. Help me. I'll tell you something that God asked me to do that was very difficult for me. And I did not do it because I wanted to. The whole 10, 15 years I did it. I didn't do it because I wanted to. I didn't ever want to. I did it because it was the right thing to do. And that was to take care of my parents when they got older, the ones who never took care of me. And you know, it really doesn't matter What your parents have done to you, you still have a responsibility before God. <laughs> I mean, my father sexually abused me for years and years and years and years. I mean, over and over and over. It's a very nasty story. My mother didn't do anything about it because she was afraid of my dad and... Uh, Even, yeah, <laughs> look at what God's done. But the thing is, is, you know, when God first, when they were got older and their health wasn't good and it was obvious they needed help, I didn't want to help them. I didn't see any reason for me to help them. I didn't want to spend my money on them. I didn't want to do that. But I knew it was right. I knew that. And even now I have a widowed aunt. They never had any children. And when my uncle was on his deathbed, I promised him that I would take care of her. And that's been like 
a 25-year journey. <laughs> and I still go to the nursing home and see her every week or two weeks, and both of my daughters go on a regular basis. And you know what? I, it's, there's not even that close of a relationship, but it's just right. She's my relative. She doesn't have anybody, and it's just the right thing to do. Come on, if you want to carry a strong anointing on your life, you, you just, just really start to do what's right because it's right and forget about how you feel about it or what it's going to cost you. Just, God, if you, if it, you say it's right, then I want to do what's right. I'm telling you what, the anointing of God is going to increase on your life. You're going to have so much more peace. I think your health will be better. You'll be stronger. I don't think we have any idea how much all these little things that we try to ignore pick away at our conscience. Yep. Amen. And we have to quit using the excuse, well, I just, I, I just can't. I just can't. Yes, Amen. you can. Amen. With God's help, I can do all things through Christ who is my strength. Now remember, pain before pleasure. <laughs> First Peter 2.15, just three scriptures here in Peter just to show you what he says about doing right. For it is God's will and intention that by doing right, your good and honest lives should silence, muzzle, and gag the ignorant charges and ill-informed criticisms of foolish persons. First Peter 3.17, for it is better to suffer unjustly for doing right if that should be God's will, than to suffer justly for doing what is wrong. <laughs> now, you see, I'm not even going to stand here and promise you that if you do what's right, you're always going to get an immediate reward. There are actually times when you can do what's right, and it can just seem like it just blows up in your face. And I'll even go so far as to tell you this. You may have to treat somebody else in your life right for a long time before they ever start treating you right. Yes. And there's even a possibility they might not ever start treating you right. But you know what? You belong to God, and you live before Him, and you're doing what's right because it's right. And let me tell you something, your reward from God will outweigh anything that you could get from anybody else. I hope you're really getting this in your heart and it's going beyond your head. I'm talking about relationship. I'm talking about living before God. I re How many of you have ever heard of Brother Lawrence who wrote Practicing the Presence of God? Okay. Well, if you've never read that book, it's just a little tiny. I've got a copy from 1910. And I, just get it and read it. It's, it's about a monk that just practiced the presence of God. And one of the things he said is he says, I am well pleased to pick a piece of paper up off the ground just for the love of God. <laughs> This morning when we left the hotel room, I left and I thought Dave was coming and he didn't come. And so I'm thinking, what are you doing? <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You know, when he finally came out, I said, what were you doing? He said, I was turning off all the lights you left on. Because <laughs> see, that's something that we feel like is right to do. Well, why should I turn off the lights of the hotel? I'm paying for the room. <laughs> well, it goes back to that do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I'm telling you what, the Holy Ghost is going to mess in your lives. I mean, I don't know if you knew what you were doing when you said, I surrender all, come and fill me with your spirit. 
I didn't want to tell you this part too early. But there's no getting out of it now. Things are about to be really different. But aren't you excited about that? Won't it be worth it? Because, see, now you, you got somebody living on the inside of you that everything you do, he's going to have something to say about it. <laughs> and a lot of it's going to be good. Good. Proud of you. But when it's not that, God, help me. <laughs> help me do what's right. 1 Peter 4, 19 Therefore, those who are ill-treated and suffer in accordance with God's will must do right. <laughs> Woo. And commit their souls in charge as a deposit to the one who created them and will never fail them. Let's say that you wanted a promotion on your job and somebody else at work that you don't like got it. And... You've been there longer than them. You actually work harder than them. But they got it. And man, you're mad at them. You're mad at the boss. You're mad at the company. You're mad at everybody. Oh, God, help me when I go to work tomorrow to do what's right. Help me, God, not to be bitter. Help me not to be resentful. Help me to put my trust in you and to believe that that was what you wanted from me, you could have made it happen. And if you didn't make it happen, then you've got something better. And then you go in and with your flesh screaming, you go to the person who got the promotion that you wanted and you say, congratulations on your promotion. I'm so happy for you. And then you walk away, God help me keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Jesus told his disciples in John 13 about washing feet, and he really just meant being a servant to other people, even in little things. And he says, now blessed are you knowing these things if you do them. You know, there's a responsibility in coming to church. I don't know if you know that or not. But boy, you, I've thrown a lot of information at you this weekend. And so now you, you don't get to go back home and just live the way you always have. <laughs> First Peter 4, 1 and 2. So since Christ suffered in the flesh for us and for you, arm yourselves with the same thought and purpose patiently to suffer rather than fail to please God. I mean, if you see that. For whoever has suffered in the flesh, and this is not talking about suffering disasters and, you know, horrible things happening to you and all kinds of disease. Suffering in the flesh means that your flesh is going to resist doing many of the things that you know is right to do. And so your flesh may suffer. How, how many of you can feel it when your flesh is suffering? All right. I mean, you just try losing five pounds and see if your flesh doesn't suffer. <laughs> it will tell you you're starving, you're dying, you can't do it. So, for whoever has suffered in the flesh, having the mind of Christ is done with intentional sin and has stopped pleasing himself and the world and pleases God. I guess the essence of what I'm saying today is I think it's time for us as a church body to get the message that the time has come for us to stop living to please ourselves and to please other people and let's make a clean break and say, I choose to live to please God, but I am going to need a lot of help. Yeah. 
Holy Spirit, fill me every moment of every day and help me, help me, help me, help me. Not just get the things I want, but help me live to please God. Help me do what is right. Verse 2, so that he can no longer spend the rest of his natural life living by his human appetites and desires, but he now lives for what God wills. You know, pain, this fleshly pain is the reason why more people don't do the Word. Because doing the Word stretches us. I can relieve the pain by disobeying, but I also relieve the blessing that would have come through the doing. <laughs> I can know that I should humble myself in a situation, but I feel no pain until I actually do it. You know, listening to me preach this is not painful. You all agree. You've even clapped and cheered at some sections. <laughs> but you got to go home. <laughs> you got to go home. It was funny last night. We were coming into the parking lot, and there were other cars, and so... I mean, our driver didn't necessarily just pull out in front of this lady, but he did cut into the line of traffic, and the lady in the car goes, <laughs> and Dave waved at her. <laughs> but see, here's the sad thing. If she would have known it was me in the car, she wouldn't have done it. But the point is, we shouldn't do it to anybody. Because then that makes us a respecter of persons, which is what Jesus tells us not to do. Boy, I'm having so much fun, I can't hardly stand it. So you're not going to really feel the weight of this message until you get up out of your seat and somebody steps on your toe or you... You get out to the parking lot and somebody cuts you off. Or, you know. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When you're waiting, when you've been waiting five minutes for a parking place, you've been waiting for somebody to back out of it who's been sitting there and sitting there and sitting there, sitting there with their backup lights on. Don't you wonder, don't you see me? And why could you not just get out of the parking space and let me have it? And what happens to you when just as they pull out, somebody over here goes, oh. <laughs> the flesh manifests. <laughs> let me tell you something. You, you know that you have arrived at some high levels of spiritual maturity when you can feel this rage <laughs> and instead just say, bless you. <laughs> Come on. I'm telling you, you better get ready. There's going to be some stuff that ain't going to work anymore. <laughs> okay, here's a good statement for you. The gap between desire and doing is determined by how much pain one is willing to endure in order to do God's will. One more time, right? Amen. The gap between desire and doing is determined by how much pain one is willing to endure in order to do God's will. So every one of you sitting here today, I, I can't imagine that there's one person in here or even anybody watching by TV that you don't really want to do what I'm talking about right now. How many of you really want to do what I'm talking about right now? All right. but you still have to go home and do it. 
<laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> I'm just reminded right now about the man that, I don't know if he cast demons out of him or if he was blind or crippled, but he had a huge problem and Jesus healed him. And he said, I want to go with you now wherever you go. <laughs> and Jesus said, go home and show them how many great things I've done for you. <laughs> so see, the idea is not for you to get on my travel team now. But the idea is for each one of you to go back into the realm that you live in at work, in school, in your homes, in your neighborhoods, and show them, not necessarily preach to them, but show them what changes God has made in you. Amen? Ooh, Jesus. Luke 5, 1. Now it occurred that while the people pressed upon Jesus to hear the message of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the Sea of Galilee, and he saw two boats drawn up by the lake, but the fishermen had gone down from them and were washing their nets. And getting into one of the boats, the one that belonged to Simon Peter, he requested him to draw away a little bit from the shore, and then he sat down and continued to teach the crowd of people from the boat. And when he stopped speaking, he said to Simon Peter, Put out into the deep water and lower your nets for a haul. Now, just quickly, I want you to realize that these guys have been fishing all night. They hadn't caught anything. They had brought these boats back, cleaned them up, cleaned up their nets, and now Jesus comes along with this bright idea that they should start all over and go back out again. And Simon Peter answered, Master, we toiled all night exhaustingly, and we caught nothing in our nets, but on the ground of your word, I will lower the net again. Now, I mean, I've preached whole series out of this Luke chapter 5. It's one of my favorite places in the Bible because I see something there that I think is important. Peter is basically saying, look, I don't want to. I don't feel like it. And I don't think it's a good idea. We've already been out there. There's no fish. We're tired. We want to go to bed. This is not going to work. But because you said to do it, I'll do it. Come on. When it comes to this kind of relationship with God, the truth is, is we don't get to vote. Now watch what happens. Verse 6, this is so amazing. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and as their nets were at the point of breaking because of all the fish they caught, they signaled their partners in the other boats to come and take hold with them, and they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. Now, here's the message. If we will do what's right and do what God says by the help of the Holy Spirit, no matter what we think or how we feel or what we want, then God is going to fill our boats and fill our nets, and they are going to be so full that we're going to have enough overflow to help everybody around us and fill up their nets. Come on, it's time for a new way to live. Thank you, Jesus. Well, you know, some days we get up and we don't even know what we're going to need that day because we don't know exactly what's going to come along. But I think it's very helpful to us to believe that through the Holy Spirit, we can do whatever we need to do, no matter what situation we're in. Right now, you may need an answer to something and you just feel like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. The Holy Spirit will help you. You may be trying to 
deal with somebody in your life that's difficult, the Holy Spirit will help you. Maybe you're going through a personal illness right now, the Holy Spirit will help you. The Holy Spirit is referred to in the Bible as the helper. He's our holy helper. Is it that makes a person want to leave the comfort and monotony of home to come someplace crazy like this and do a medical clinic? Well, let's ask the volunteer doctors and nurses who do it all the time. They look sad and get downhearted, and then they look at you, get make eye contact, and you smile, and they read that smile, and then they start smiling, and then the kids all run to you and they smile. When you really experience that, you just, you would, you're hooked. <laughs> so what do you think? It can't hurt to at least check it out, right? All you need to do is go to our website, JoyceMeyer.org. All the information is there for you. And just think, your adventure may begin today. the Word of God teaches us that if we are willing to share what we have, God can multiply that and make it into a lot more than what we started with. So please share. Help ons om andere mensen te kunnen helpen. Bel ons 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meijer.nl slash partner. Elk gebed en elke donatie telt. Samen veranderen we de wereld. Een vervuld leven komt niet uit de hemel vallen. Maar het is zeker mogelijk, zegt Joyce Meyer. En ze laat je graag zien hoe je dat kunt bereiken. Maak kennis met Joyce, met haar levensverhaal... Met haar tips voor het dagelijks leven, met haar boeken en alle andere impulsen die je kunnen leiden naar een vervuld leven. Bestel gratis de informatiebroschure en bel 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meyer.nl slash brochure.